for my son's second Christmas, I wanted to make something for him that would hopefully last for years to come. He seems to have acquired most of the toys in the Southern Hemisphere, so I thought a toy box might be good for him. But just a box is kind of boring, so why not make it a treasure chest? So I turned to Pinterest for some inspiration and got to work designing a pirate treasure chest. I've made detailed plans available on my website for just a couple of bucks if you'd like to build one yourself. I've found that I work better with a plan, so I made a 3D model of the chest in Fusion 360, giving a lot of consideration to how it will be built, as any designer should. I haven't done a lot of what I guess you'd call fine woodworking, so I thought I'd make it a bit easier on myself by using off-the-shelf timber boards. For construction, I originally chose Tasmanian oak strips, but there wasn't enough available locally. The next best option was Maranti DAR strips, which had the added benefit of being lighter in weight, cheaper, and the longer lengths meant that I wouldn't need as many of them. Gladly, I'd use parameters in my Fusion 360 design since I've learned that often the advertised dimensions of products don't match reality, so to adapt the model to the slightly different dimensions of the Maranti was a simple matter of updating two numbers in the parameters menu. The chest design is fairly straightforward, but the lid has some angled cuts that could be a challenge for a beginner like me, so planning them in advance helped out a lot. I wasn't sure how I'd make the dark strips on the faces, whether they'd be from steel like a real pirate chest or some dark timber. In the end I chose timber, which both simplified and sped up the process, as you'll see later. To complete the look, I specified upholstery tacks to make it seem like it's been riveted together by a salty old sea dog. So then once I'd modelled the chest in 3D space, I created a set of construction drawings with all the relevant dimensions, and I acquired all the materials, parts and tools I'd need to start building it. I swapped the new blade onto the miter saw and cut the Mirandi strips to the length required for the front, back and sides of the box. I would have liked to set up a stop block at the cut lengths but I couldn't and ended up measuring, marking and cutting each one separately, like a stooge. I cut the lengths for the lid while I was at it. Dressed timber comes with nice sharp corners on it, but for the chest I thought a small round on the outward facing edges would look the part. I picked up this 1.6mm round over router bit and treated the outer faces, ends and about 20mm in from the end of the inside faces. I was planning to cover the inside of the chest with a stick on felt so I wanted the inner surfaces to be as flat as possible. The side panels were rounded off on the top and bottom edges too. I sorted the long strips to mix the different coloured timbers and then I used a rebate router bit on all the bottom pieces to make an 11mm rebate to fit the MDF baseboard. 30mm square pine was used to join the front and back panels to the sides so that the screws would be hidden inside the chest. They also received a nice 12mm round with the router. The large panels were then glued up and the pine uprights were pinned to keep them together. The uprights were set back for effect and then they were screwed. Once the front and back panels were done, the side pieces were attached one at a time using glue and a brad nail from the rear with the aid of a clamp to hold them in place. Then with all the side pieces attached, the front panel was set in place with glue, some brads, and some screws. The 
the lower part of the chest was quite straightforward, but the lid would need angled rip cuts that I wasn't sure my cheap table saw could handle. To give myself a fighting chance, I bought a featherboard for the table saw, along with a set of push blocks, and the new 60 tooth blade I picked up for the miter saw would also fit the table saw. The front and rear panels are identical, and the top panels are also all the same to reduce the time setting up the saw. Once it was set though, it was a quick job to run one side of them through the machine, set up for the second cut, and run them through again. I will need to sort out some dust collection though. To make the side panels, I glued three pieces of Moranti together for each face and while it was drying, I drew a template on some paper, taking the measurements from the CAD model with the intention of transferring it to a scrap piece of MDF. I cut the drawing where it would line up with the straight edge of the MDF piece and taped it on, then cut it to length on the drop saw. Then roughly cut off the corners and slightly less roughly cut out the shape with the jigsaw. It was then ground down to its final dimensions using the disc sander. With the template done and the glue on the timber panels dry, they were cut close to their final size and using the palm router again, I took to them with the flush trim bit, using that template as a guide and they were done. What was I even worried about? Before assembling the lid, the long strips needed another going over with the router and a light sanding. Then I could glue and screw the front and back strips to the side panels, creating a solid structure that would allow me to test fit the top strips. It turned out they were slightly too wide, which is much better than them not being wide enough. So with the table saw still set up, I took about half a millimetre off the first top two. Then test fitting and worked my way down the strips until they fit. It ended up being six strips that needed trimming. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I attached the strips using glue and a screw into each of the side plates, working my way up the front and then the back, before attaching the two top strips. Now the lid was done, I was keen to see it attached to the box. I decided on these small hinges that would be small enough to attach to the 18mm Moranti and I used the router again to mill out the recess for them to sit in, allowing the lid to close flush with the box. I picked up this new self-centering drill bit which came to me across one of the seven C's and used it to drill pilot holes for the hinge screws. It worked pretty well and the hinges came up looking ship shape. I was pretty happy with my progress at this stage, but I was in the doldrums about how I'd make the dark face strips over the lid and dread was starting to set in. The dark straps on the chest would usually be made from steel and I did consider doing it that way but ultimately I wasn't confident enough in my metalworking skills to get it done in time for Christmas so I chose to use thin timber strips that were stained black instead. There was no timber available at the thickness I needed so I had to run some thicker timber through the table saw to have appropriately sized face strips. The featherboard really helped to keep the pieces consistent. The face strips for the lower part of the chest were cut and laid out so I could mark out where they needed a rounded edge. The 1.6mm roundover bit was used again to take off the sharp edges and then all the strips received a sanding. I realised that I needed to install a second set of hinges to locate the strips on the rear of the chest 
so that came next. This is a better view of how it was done. When the hinges were hunky-dory, I got back to the face strips, laying them out on the chest to confirm they fit, and labelling them on the back, before hitting them with the stain. I used this Japan black stain I found at the Hammer Barn, which seems to work okay, just giving the strips one coat. While they were drying, I gave the chest a good sanding, which I thought would be easier to do while the straps weren't attached. And I was reminded that I hadn't made the bottom panel yet. The straps dried pretty quickly and I was keen to get them on so that's what I did next. Laying them out on the front surface of the chest, gluing them in place, measuring up for the upholstery tack positions, and whacking them in. I used this nylon hammer for the job since they had some sort of coating on them and I thought it would minimise any damage to them. It was about this time that my main camera left me high and dry so the rest of the film was shot using only my action cam. Then I turned to making the face strips for the lid. I had this idea to route V grooves into the back of the strips and try to bend them over the top of the lid, but I wasn't confident in my abilities, so I ended up making a small angled piece for each board. I cut them one at a time, measuring up for the best fit that I could manage. As you can see, I ran the small round router over the edges, gave them a quick sand, and stained the edges of each piece before gluing them on. I thought staining the edges would allow me to stain the face strips without getting it on the unstained timber, and later sand the top faces all at once to create a nice smooth transition, followed by finishing the stain on the outward facing edges. So after measuring, cutting, routing, staining and gluing each piece, I felt like it was close to land ho for this project. After the glue dried on the strips, I gave them all a good sanding with a random orbit sander. The last of the face strips was a little piece to sit in front of the chest to attach the hasp and staple. So I cut it to length and put some 45s on the bottom corners, then gave it a sanding and a once over with the router. I confirmed that it fit and then I got out the stain again and carefully applied it to the top faces of the straps, taking care not to get any on the unstained Moranti, and gave the hasp and staple plate a coat as well. Some saw marks on the ends of the long strips were bugging me so I gave them another sanding in preparation for rubbing oil on the chest. The staple plate was then glued on and allowed to dry and while that was happening I decided to install the chain stays so I could keep the lid open while I was oiling the inside of it. After some final sanding and a good blowout, the chest was ready for a coat of Danish oil. I gave the inside a coat first since I needed it to dry in time for me to apply some felt to the inside faces. 
The outside then received a coat as well. Before I could apply the felt, I had to finish the bottom panel. I used a piece of MDF VJ board we had left over from the renovations and cut it to size before gluing and nailing it. Next were the handles. I figured it would be best to at least drill the holes for them before the felt was stuck on. So I marked and drilled them and test fitted the handles. I'd never used a stick-on felt before, so I had no idea what to expect when applying it to the chest. I used the scissors to cut a strip that was slightly wider than the two sides of the pine uprights. And I cut a 10mm split in the centre of the piece, peeled off part of the backing and pressed it on, making my way upwards while pressing it into the corners of the chest. This seemed to work pretty well. I cut and shut the excess felt and tied it up with the knife as best I could. Then it was a matter of covering the rest of the uprights. Running a piece down either side that I trimmed flush with the uprights on the bottom of the chest. And then running one big piece all the way from the top of the back side, along the bottom and up to the top of the front side. It was then carefully trimmed with the knife. I used the MDF template to cut some slightly oversized pieces for the sides of the lid, stuck them on and gave them a trim. And finally the underside of the lid received one big piece and was trimmed flush to the side pieces. It's not perfect but I'm happy with how it came out and once it's full of toys it'll be barely noticeable. Next up was the hasp and staple. I used the self-centering drill to locate the screws, then screwed it on, and then pushed the staple up to the top of the opening in the hasp to locate it, and screwed it on as well. The handle screws needed trimming before they could be used. I was a bit of a loose cannon with the nippers, but I worked it out eventually. Then the last job before the final coat of oil was to nail all these upholstery tacks into the lid, which I found quite satisfying. And then for the oil, it was such a relief to get to this point. We had to leave for our family Christmas the next day and I hadn't even gone to buy beer yet. I was really happy with how the chest came out and I'm hoping that Emmett will love it when he learns more about pirates and their treasure. One thing I'd like to add to the chest is a gas strut to keep the lid from falling on his little fingies. But now it was time to pack up and head north for Christmas. Even though we weren't at home, Santa managed to find Emmett and his cousins at his auntie's house. He must have been a good boy this year because Santa brought him a whole lot of neat gifts. It was nice to spend time with the family and give and receive gifts. But I was most looking forward to giving the treasure chest to my son. I threw in some pirate related paraphernalia that I don't think he knew what to make of. But he is still a bit young to understand what the fuss was all about. But once we got home, he was more into the pirate spirit and now I think he wants to live in there. Merry Christmas, if that's your thing, and thanks for watching.
If you liked the cut of my jib and reckon I deserve a beer for my troubles, check out my PayPal link in the description to make a one-off donation. Also, if you're in the market for some reasonably priced gear for photography and videography, click my affiliate link with Newer and check out their wares. Here's cheers.